Hello and welcome to the presentation of our graphical user interface for bridge building. Since this interface used a large portion of the previous project's foundation, all of the features found in that version are also found here, such as reading and saving structures, clearing out all structures, the ability to turn on or off element or node labels, and more. Now to get to what is different. First off, it is easy to see that we always start with two nodes at the start of the process, with a 10 meter gap and a representative river in the middle. The ability to choose material properties and areas of different elements has been moved to sandbox mode, since these parameters are already set to steel's material properties, which are 210 GPa for Young modules and 8000 kg per meter cubed for density. There are a lot of other new features that come with this version. First and one of the most important ones is the ability to draw splines with no hassle. Simply entering desired nodes and the angle of the spline is enough to create an arch structure. Spline drawing tool will create an ideal structure without the need for further clarification from the user and will even display a preview of the structure if this button is pressed. To see these detailed structures clearly, there are two new added tools, the zoom and axis ratio functions. These make it much easier to clearly see and manipulate the intricate parts of any structure. Another added function is a new display at the bottom that shows the mass of the bridge in kilograms. This wasn't in the previous versions since the mass of the structure didn't matter too much, but since this is the study of a bridge, we will definitely need this information. There is also a new info button that will give the user the most basic information about the current conditions, such as the river depth and the gap between two sides. Also included is a very basic instruction that points out information about statically determinate and indeterminate structures. As before, there are many of these error messages in this version too. So much, in fact, that they cannot be demonstrated properly within a reasonable time frame. So they are shown on the screen right now. The last big feature of this program is the sandbox mode, where the user has full control over almost every aspect of the analysis. This includes river geometry, gap and bridge length, and not to mention material properties. Finally, we will run a sample analysis to show how the procedure works. Similar to the previous version, the user needs to input node coordinates to create nodes, and then pick two nodes to create an element. However, no element can be larger than 3 meters in quick design. Elements larger than 3 meters can be created in sandbox mode. As mentioned before, the first two nodes are already given and are of the Dirichlet type, meaning they cannot be displaced, which is why they are represented by rectangles. Speaking of boundary conditions, they have also been moved to the sandbox mode. In quick design, the code automatically applies 100,000 newtons on the middle node when it's run. If there is no middle node, then the code will look for a close node that it can use as an alternative. However, if there is no sufficiently close node, the code will not run. Now we can do our analysis. In the results page, it is possible to see the displacements and their exaggerations. And on top of that is now the ability to see maximum and center total mass times displacement. The tabs that were meant to be helpful, like the extended node list and material property list, are all still here with some new additions. Now, the user can see the densities of materials in the Engineering Materials tab. And also, there's a brand new tab that shows the user examples of unstable structures and explanations as to why they are unstable. This is intended to serve as a guide to NOAS users. Thank you for listening to our presentation.